We're obsessed with the future. This reveals a fundamental capability of human beings, that we can perceive the flow of time. We know we're coming from the past and heading into the future. And we really want to know what's waiting for us there. Who better to ask about that than futurists, right? But when you ask them about our future with artificial intelligence, something frustrating happens. Those futurists disagree, not by a little, but by as much as they possibly could. One group predicts AI creating a utopia, curing everything from disease and cancer to aging and death. Another says that AI could wipe us out. You know, it seems to me that if your job is to predict the future, you ought to be in a little more agreement on something as fundamental as, I don't know, the survival of the entire human race. They literally couldn't be further apart. Only other experts I know that are that far apart on anything are the ones who write the investment newsletters I should probably stop reading. <laughs> Why are futurists in such disagreement over stakes so important as a threat to our very existence? Because this is different from other existential threats like, say, an asteroid coming towards the Earth. Unless you're one of the people I've worked with at NASA, or a billionaire with your own rocket company, you're not participating in the solution to that problem. But because AI has the potential to rival or surpass us at decision-making, our future with it depends very much on what we all do. And that is something the futurists have not predicted. So what do we do about it? I've worked with many people around the world on that question, from schools to boardrooms. And their reactions range from anticipation to terror, but mostly also overwhelm. Where do we start? We start by shifting our thinking. The first shift is to stop seeing futurists as this small group of authors in turtleneck sweaters on talk shows. <laughs> but instead, to own that we are all futurists. Because we're all continually predicting and creating the future. It's just that most of us are doing that unconsciously. But we can no longer afford to remain unconscious, not when technology is expanding exponentially. And that's about to become a big problem. You see, it always used to be that technology was the slower one in our partnership, like we were dragging a three-year-old through an airport trying to make a flight. Come on, hurry up. Store my files faster. Send my emails faster. Don't help my calls faster. But now the tables are turned. Technology is caught up. Now we are the three-year-olds. The faster it goes, the faster we go. The alarm rings, you get up. The microwave beeps, you eat. Siri says, time for work, you leave. The car says, turn left here, you do it. The phone rings, you answer it. Email arrives, you read it. Studies show that the more technologically advanced a country is, the faster the pace of life. That we're walking 10% faster than we did 10 years ago. That the median time to respond to an email is now under two hours because we check our email and messages on average every six minutes. 81% of US employees check their work email outside of business hours. Over 40% of our day is spent multitasking. So if you make it all the way through my talk without looking at your phone, <laughs> congratulations, you're bucking the trend. <laughs> Who said it had to be like this? We did. We, collectively, made up those rules. Unconsciously, for the most part, to be sure. But that's what unconscious futurists do, right? We did that. And while the human brain isn't getting any bigger, there's no limit to how fast computers could get. When AI is a million times faster, what could it be doing? 
Automation isn't only for mundane, repetitive tasks. AI is already performing solid, white-collar, professional jobs you need a sharp, analytical mind for, like radiologist and paralegal. As AI evolves, its power will go into making increasingly sophisticated decisions. How might that turn out? Imagine, for an example, not far in the future, the CEO of a major company, let's call her Jill, sitting in her office when a device on her desk, somewhat like a high-tech hockey puck, sounds a chime. Ding! It is the enterprise AI calling with a question. <clears throat> Ma'am? It is nothing if not polite. <clears throat> Ma'am? Real-time marketing surveys show increasing interest among the 37 to 49 demographic in the southeast for an extension of our secondary product line. Shall I begin the design and marketing phases? Oh. Jill thinks for a minute and says, well, let me see. I'm going to need some more information. But the puck cuts her off. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> it's a Canadian AI. <laughs> Sorry, but there were signs our competition was going to move into this area, so I did it anyway. Pre-sales are already up 0.7%. If that smug little puck <laughs> is right, even most of the time, what's Jill going to do? Particularly if her competition CEO just went to the golf course, left his puck on full automatic so it didn't even have to wait for his approval? Well, sure, that sounds great for him now, but how long until his board of directors, or hers, decides they're no longer worth as much as they're being paid? If that's the future waiting for CEOs, what are we creating for the me and yous? As technology gets incomprehensibly faster, what will become of our pace of work? What will become of our place at work? We've been running faster and faster on our hamster wheels for so long, we've not noticed that now technology is the one spinning the wheels. If you're running that rat race so your company can defeat the competition with superior technology, then what is the prize? How might technology spin those wheels faster? We're now implanting computers the size of a rice grain in everyday things. Spoons, pill bottles, keys. So we can connect them to the network and make them smart. Within a few years, everything our phones need to do will fit in an equally small space. But then it would be rather easy to lose in the kitchen drawer, yes? Don't worry. We'll solve that by keeping them in here. <laughs> we'll all be able to hear voices in our heads. By then, we'd better have this relationship with artificial intelligence worked out. Or well, the way in which technology sets the pace of life will take on a whole new meaning. This isn't just about work-life balance. When AI gets so fast, it outstrips our ability to adapt. It will trigger an existential crisis. Despite what I just said, we're not in a duel with AI, because it really can create utopia. It's a partnership. And in any partnership, both sides need to adjust. But when they get it right, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. We've begun to experience the effects of this. As AI holds up a mirror to us, it requires us to decide what it means to be human. Who do you want to be in that future? To avoid the crisis, we need to become conscious futurists. Start with a personal vision, where you draw the lines between what you want technology to do for you and what you want for yourself. For instance, getting AI to answer the phone when telemarketers call, yes. Getting it to talk to your spouse, no. <laughs> Keeping track of your workouts, yes. Keeping you at a desk instead of going to the gym, no. Printing paychecks, yes. Breaking the news to someone that they're laid off, no. Extend this thinking to the workplace to make conscious futurism an integral function of your business. Don't assume that disruption won't affect you. Educate yourself on technology trends within your industry. Maybe you 
create a department of futuring or appoint a chief futurism officer, their job and yours will be to decide what you will automate and what fulfills your people. Give those people, your fellow futurists, the time to do conscious futuring. We've been using more and more technology in the belief that it would give us more and more time, and instead it's left us with less and less. If you don't think technology has yet given you the freedom to allow people time to see the big picture, then when is it supposed to? Remember, neither employees nor managers are going to be able to keep up with those pucks. So if you don't start asking those questions and making those decisions now, they'll get exponentially harder. We're all in this together. So reach across organizational hierarchies and ask each other, how do you see us thriving in a future of smart AI? And how can we get off those hamster wheels to do that? We fooled ourselves that the rules of this world were made by a few politicians, captains of industry, thought leaders. But they didn't decide by themselves how we would use technology. We all made those rules together. Consciously, we can change them. Won't be easy. But utopia has to be earned. When a handful of futurists predict the future, they disagree. When all of us are futurists, we won't predict the future. We'll create it. And then we really will know what's waiting for us. Thank you. <laughs>